praises is due to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. Today, I will be talking about the killing of the firstborn. This was a remarkable event that took place in history and it will happen again for the Bible declares that there's nothing new under the sun. The thing which hath been is the thing which shall be. And I want to start in the book of Samuel and I want to go to second Samuel rather chapter 11. Verse 1, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now David in this scripture is twofold. The Bible is like the movies. You have characters playing multiple characters. One character can play one to two to three to four or more different characters because God's wisdom is multifaceted. It is the manifold wisdom of God. God's word is like a mountain. You can climb it from the south, get a view, climb it from the north, get a different view, climb it from the east and the west and get a totally different view. Although it is the same mountain, it is the same book. Jesus was taken up to be with the king, God Almighty in heaven. And he was watching a man named Paul steal his father's church and put his name on it. So let's look at verse two again. And it came to pass in the evening time that David, speaking of Jesus, arose from off his Bed. I'm going to pause right there because in the gospel of Barnabas, it says that Jesus went into heaven out of a window from his bedroom, accompanied by four angels. OK, now this is just another reference. That's all it is. And he went into heaven from his bedroom going on. He saw a woman washing herself. Now think about it. Jesus is in the king's house. That's God Almighty. He's the real king. And he's looking down and he's seeing a woman wash herself. What is this woman washing herself? What is that going into? That is going into the religion of Islam. Bathsheba was a picture of the nation of Islam because we are into the ritual washing. And it is a very beautiful religion. Masha Allah. I'm going to keep going. Second Samuel 11 and 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him and lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house. Now we're going into the other David. Who is this other David? The other David is Paul. Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay. Although he's not from the tribe of Judah, he is from the tribe of Judah because the tribe of Judah consist of Benjamin and Levi. According to the Bible, the children of Israel did wickedness. And during the days of Solomon's son, because of senior Solomon, 
the kingdom was rent. And Ephraim was the northern kingdom and Judah was considered the southern kingdom. So here we have David and it's Paul. He's looking at this church and he is about to abuse this church. And David sent messengers and took her. That's going into how Paul sent letters and took the church. 2 Samuel 11 and 5. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. You see, everyone thinks the church belongs to Jesus. But it doesn't belong to Jesus. It belongs to Paul. Just like everyone thought Bathsheba belonged to Uriah. But she did not belong to Uriah. She ended up belonging to David. The church just has Jesus' name on it, but it belongs to Paul. Just like Bathsheba just had Uriah's name on her, but she belonged to David. Now we're going to talk about three men. Uriah, Joseph, and Jesus. Verse 6, and David sent to Joab, saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house, and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? Now, what story in the Bible is similar to this? Think about it. Joseph. Joseph was all alone in the house with Potiphar's wife. She wanted to lie with him, but he refused. And because he didn't lie with her, he got into trouble. Now, the church now belongs to Paul. Jesus don't have anything to do with it. Just like this woman that Uriah used to have, she doesn't belong to him no more. He's not going to mess with her. She's going to Paul. And it's the same thing with Joseph. Joseph did not mess with Potiphar's wife. He ran. He ran. The church does not have Jesus. They have Paul. Just like Potiphar's wife did not have Joseph. She had his garment. Who is the garment? Guess. Paul. Who put Jesus in this predicament? Paul. Who put Joseph in Potiphar's house? Potiphar. But who is Potiphar a type and shadow of? Paul. Get it? Potiphar, the wolf in sheep clothing, him being from the tribe of Benjamin. The symbol is the wolf. Okay. Potiphar was a picture of Paul. This all points to Paul, y'all, from the tribe of Benjamin or Judah. That's why Jesus called him the wolf in sheep clothing. Verse 11. And Uriah said unto David, the ark in Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest and as thy soul liveth? I will not do this thing. Now you're going to understand how Uriah he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Verse 12, And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also and tomorrow, and I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. 
and he made him drunk. And at evening, he went out to lie on his bed with his servants, his Lord. Now, what's amazing about the gospel of Barnabas is it says that Jesus was in the bedroom with his disciples when he went up into heaven alive. Just like Uriah, he was in there with the servants of his Lord. But he went not down to his house. Now, David tried to get the man drunk. Now, we know, according to the Bible, Paul did the same thing. I'm going to get that for you. This is further proof that David, in this scripture, in this Bible character, he also plays a type and shadow of Paul. 1 Timothy 5, 23. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmity. So here we have Paul pressuring Timothy to drink. Just like David gave Uriah some alcohol, Paul is giving Timothy some Alcohol, Man, this fits Paul. Everything that I'm bringing out is fitting Paul exactly. Like a pair of shoes. Verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire you from him that he may be smitten and die so here we have Uriah being led like a sheep to the slaughter why because he's being murdered through a letter just like Jesus he was murdered on biblical record by the hands of Paul now how did he kill Uriah he set Uriah in the forefront of the battle what is that going into? How did Paul set Jesus in the forefront of the battle? I'll show you. Colossians 1.15 Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created. Verse 17 And he is before all things. This is Paul saying all this about Jesus or Uriah. He put Jesus before all things. Now, when it goes into hottest battle, this is what made God hot. You're talking about pissing God off. He just made Jesus the co-creator. He set Jesus in the forefront of the battle. And that's exactly what David did with Uriah. He murdered Jesus on biblical record. Now, let's look further at that next scripture. This is going to be 2 Samuel. And retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Now, what does that mean? Set him in the forefront of the hottest battle, support him, and then leave or forsake him. In other words, Pull back. Now, how did Paul do this? I'll show you how. Romans 1.23 And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So Paul has the strongest scripture in the Bible against idolatry. So how did he retire him? Simple. He became a hypocrite. He literally puffs Jesus up and then he airs Jesus out. He set him on the forefront of the battle and then he left. This is what you call being a hypocrite. This is why Jesus used the word hypocrite 20 times. He is the only person in the New Testament to use the word hypocrite. 
And the only time he mentioned it was speaking of the Pharisees, which was really speaking of the Pharisee named Paul. Verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah into a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Paul stole the church by killing Jesus on biblical record. Just like David stole Bathsheba by killing Uriah. So let's do a recap. David stole a man's wife by killing her husband through a letter. Paul stole the church by killing Jesus through 13 letters or through letters. Now I pondered on the name Bathsheba and Bathsheba represents the nation of Islam because only Muslims purify themselves with ritual washings. Get it? Bathsheba. She was taking a bath when David or Paul seen her. This is the woman Uriah was married to. Just like this is the religion that Jesus is Messiah of Wow. This is the congregation Jesus was watching over the banister of heaven or on David's rooftop. However you look at it. He's in the king house. He's looking down and he sees this beautiful religion. Mashallah. This is why her son Solomon was allowed to be king over all the rest of David's children. Because this was the chosen religion above all other religions. Now think about it. Uriah was with Bathsheba before David. So that means that before Paul came along. Jesus was interested in Bathsheba first. He was interested in Islam first. This proves Jesus was a Muslim. Islam is a beautiful religion to Jesus. Did y'all see that? Uriah had her first. Jesus had her first. Now look at all of these converts going from Islam. To Christianity. Could you imagine. How Jesus feels about that. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go on. Verse 26. And when the wife of Uriah. Heard that Uriah. Her husband was dead. She mourned. For her husband. And when the morning was past. David sent and fetched her. To his house and she became his wife and bare him a son but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord so think about it this is a picture of Jesus dying at the last day okay because Uriah is dead and what's happening the church is in mourning mourning there's going to be a great mourning and we're going to get further scriptures on that mourning but what happened was Paul stole the church. After Jesus left the scene, Paul came on the scene and he stole the church. He stole the church from Peter. He stole the church from all the apostles and he took possession of the church. Just like David, he took Uriah's wife. And you know, that this displeased the Lord. This is a picture of Jesus dying in the last day. And there's further more scriptures. Matter of fact, let me get you those scriptures on morning. Jeremiah 6 and 26. O daughter of my people, gird thee with sackcloth and wallow thyself in ashes. Make thee mourning as for an only son. Most bitter lamentation for the spoiler shall suddenly Come upon us. This is another precept to Jesus dying at the last day. Amos 8 and 10. And I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son. 
and the end thereof as a bitter day. The cry on the day of the Lord is going to be bitter. Oh, it's going to be bitter. This is so unfair. Here we have a man that had nothing to do with Paul's plans and he died innocently. Okay? Just like Uriah dying at the hands of David because he was going after the glory. He was going after that beautiful church. Now I want to talk about the last day judgment. And this is going to go into how Nathan had to rebuke David. 2 Samuel 12 and 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Now, the rich man we know is Paul. And the poor man is Jesus. That's why Jesus always stood up for the poor. He told the disciples to remember the poor. Galatians 2.10, only they would, that they should remember the poor. The same which I also was forwarded to do. So we see that the rich man was Paul. Jesus was the poor man. Verse 2, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. All these churches all over the world that has Jesus' name on them. They don't belong to him. They belong to the rich man. They belong to the certain rich man. There's a parable about it, about the rich man and Lazarus. Okay? Now that Lazarus was nothing but a picture of Jesus and that rich man was nothing but a picture of Paul when he wanted someone to go back and tell his brothers how hot hell was. You remember what Abraham told him? Abraham told him they have Moses and they have the prophets. If they have Moses and the prophets, they will not be persuaded though one rose from the dead. That was Paul's judgment. That was Paul's judgment. He taught that. He preached that. Going on. All these churches, they belong to Paul. Paul is the first king of Israel. He is a king Saul. But Jesus only had one church. And that church wasn't his. It was his father's. And that church is the church of Islam. Okay. Or the religion of Islam. Or the mosque of Islam. And I'm going to show you some more scriptures on that. But let's go to verse 3. But the poor man had nothing. Jesus Say one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and he grew it up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. See, this proves this church did not belong to Jesus. It was his father's church. He treated it like a daughter. And it laid in his bosom. What is that going into? First Kings chapter 1 verse 1. Now King David was old and stricken in years. And they covered him with clothes. But he got no heat. Wherefore his servant said unto him. Let there be sought for my lord the king a young virgin. Now this is a woman who never experienced a man. In other words, she's never experienced a religion. Okay? These are the Arabs. This is the nation of Islam right here. The nation of Ishmael. And let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coast of Israel and found a Bishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair and cherished the king and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Now this Shunammite was nothing but the daughter of Islam. It was nothing but the nation of Ishmael. It was the religion of Islam. The Palestinians. It was the religion of Islam. Now if you look up the word Shuna. Just look it up. H7766. It literally 
translates to Palestine. It's a place in Palestine. This woman that David did not lay with was not his church. It was his father's church. Because women in the Bible represents kingdoms. You can start a kingdom with a woman. That's why they always killed the men and kept the women. Women represents kingdoms. And women represents nations and churches. And so David did not lay with her intimately. And so you'll see that this is a picture of Islam. It's a picture of the beautiful religion of Islam. Now get this. Adonijah, which was David's son. This man tried to take his father's kingdom. He tried to take his brother's kingship. Okay. And he failed. He wasn't successful. And he does a huge no-no. He gets with Bathsheba and he asked for Abishag, the Shunammite, to wife. And Solomon killed him on the spot. And we know that Solomon is a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. You can see his name written in the original Hebrew translation in Song of Solomon 5 and 16. He killed Adonijah on the spot. Okay? Because this is a picture of the beautiful church. The religion that has laws contrary to to all other religions. It is a clean religion. The women dress right. The men act right. Okay. We are not perfect. There's no perfect religion. But the religion of Islam. In my opinion. I believe. Is the most beautiful religion. And I believe. From the types and shadows. I am supported by the Bible. On that one. This is proof that the church of Islam does not belong to Jesus. He's just the Messiah of it. This is why David did not lay with the woman of Shunem, which translates to Palestine. And when David's son asked to marry Abishag, Solomon killed him. God loves Islam. You better watch your mouth. Verse 4. And there came a traveler unto the rich man. And he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wafering man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. So this is a type and shadow of Israel. Now, the traveler represents the Israelis. Think about it. And I'm going to bring you a scripture. Judges 5 and 6. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of jail, now jail represents Paul. Jail was the tent peg killer. Paul was a tent peg killer. Jail actually means jail. You could say it like a jail. And Paul was a jailer. She drove a tent peg through Sisera's temples. And I preach it all the time that Paul has been killing the church with the cross. In the days of jail, in the days of Christianity, Okay, Shamgar, the son of Anna, in the days of jail, the highways were occupied and the travelers walked through byways. This traveler represents Israel because Shamgar actually means judge of Israel. Now, the traveler is Israel and Paul's Christian nation, okay, has killed Jesus' lamb. That lamb is Islam with the help of America, a Christian nation. So right now today, America is playing the devil's advocate. A Christian nation is helping a nation that does not know Jesus as their Messiah kill a nation, the Palestinians, the Shunammite, that does believe Jesus is their Messiah. I'm going to say it again. The traveler is Israel. Paul's Christian nation has killed the lamb. Who is the lamb? The Palestinians or the nation of Islam. Who is the chosen people of God? Wow. 
telling you, man, this stuff right here is very deep. This is very deep. This was the only religion that Jesus knew. This was the only religion he was interested in. This was his only lamb. And Paul took it and he slaughtered it. Now, that makes me think about Mehmed II when he sent messengers, okay, to Valad Dracula, the type and shadow of Paul, to collect tax. And what did Valad Dracula do? He killed Mehmed II's messengers and he drove tent pegs through their skull. What is that going into? That is going into people that are in Islam being converted to Christianity. Oh, that's got to hurt the father's eyes. Oh, that is very painful. It must be very painful for Jesus to witness people that are in the truth of Islam leaving and going to Paul's religion. Wow. Now let's go to verse 5. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, Paul. And he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, and Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel and I delivered you out of of the hand of Saul. Now, this is the same rebuke that God gave senior King Saul. In 1 Samuel 15, 16, and 19, if you want, you can read that. And I gave thee thy master's houses and thy master's wives into thy bosom. So this is a picture of Saul's judgment, the apostle Paul. He allowed, God allowed Paul to have all these churches with Jesus' name on it. He allowed him to have all these churches with Jesus' name on it. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. So he said, I gave you the house of Israel. I gave you the house of Judah. If that had been too little, I would have put more on you. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed the Messiah. Paul, you killed the Messiah on biblical record. You killed Jesus on biblical record. This is the judgment of Paul. Thou hast killed Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword, and has taken his wife to be thy wife. So you killed Uriah with the sword. What is the sword? The book, the word, with your letters. You killed Jesus on biblical record. Just like David killed Uriah with the letter. And gave it to him. Okay. This is exactly what Paul did. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. And has taken his wife to be your wife. You took his churches. Even though it wasn't even his churches. It was his father's house. The church was like a daughter to him. You made the church your wife. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Amen. So this is going into the other nations. This is going into even Israel. You allowing the Palestinians to be killed by Christians. By people who do not even know Jesus as their Messiah by the other nations. It's all your fault, Paul. Basically is what he's saying. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and has taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. That's the only church the Most High is concerned about for the most part is the church of Islam. Okay, this was the little lamb. This was the Shunammite. Okay, this was the only thing he had. This was the Bathsheba. Okay, you took that. That wasn't yours. 
Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives or thy churches. Therefore, I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. So this is talking about because of what Paul did, all of the Christian converts are going to come to Islam for the most part. Right now, Islam is the fastest growing religion. And all of these nations are coming to Islam. The truth is, Paul, he wanted to be the Shiloh. Paul wanted to be the Shiloh. He wanted to be the prophet of Arabia. Okay? Better known as the Deuteronomy 18.18 18 prophet. That's why he was in the wilderness. Okay? He was in Arabia. That's why he was writing letters. Paul, in his own mind, he thought he was that prophet. Okay? And... I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. This is why Islam is the fastest growing religion because God is allowing all the Christians who formerly was a part of Paul's church to join Islam. I am a result of that. I had about 20 years in Christianity. Five in the Israelite movement, but it's nothing more than Christianity because they both believe Jesus died and rose from the dead for their sins. Okay, I am a result of that. Paul wanted to be this guy in Deuteronomy 33 and 2. And he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran and he came with ten thousands of saints from his right hand went a fiery law for them. So those ten wives, okay, that Absalom had, okay, from David is a picture of the prophet Muhammad coming into Mecca, 629 CE, with 10,000 converts, okay, to Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. He is the Deuteronomy 1818 prophet. He came after Jesus. Paul was too soon. He went. He, he was moving too fast. Okay, that prophet was to come 500 years later. And Paul literally thought he was the Shiloh. He literally thought he was that prophet. And he deceived himself. And we know that that prophet did come 500 years later. And that prophet is the prophet Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon him. Verse 12, for thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Okay, what Paul did was secret. That's why most people don't know. You say something about Paul, people think you're going crazy. Okay, you have to be studied up. You have to be a man that's in the word. You got to be able to see from going through these scriptures what really is going on okay and that comes from studying verse 13 and david said unto nathan i have sinned against the lord and nathan said unto david the lord also have put away thy sin thou shalt not die how be it because by this deed thou has given great occasion to the enemies of the lord to blaspheme wow paul did that the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So now Jesus has to die. This is why. This is why Jesus has to come here and die all because of Paul. Paul was like Cain who killed his brother Abel. That child that has to come and die is going to be Jesus after he comes as a just ruler, okay, and destroys the cross, okay, destroys Christianity, okay, handles his father's business, then he will die in the sight of all the people. And the Lord is going to have to close his eyes. Wow. That is so sad, man. That's why it's going to be a great morning. Okay, and we'll get back to that. And Nathan departed unto his house and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. And it was very 
sick. Okay? The Lord is going to do this. The Lord is going to cause Jesus to die. Verse 16. David therefore besought God for the child and fasted. David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. No amount of prayer. Nothing the Christians say. Nothing the Christians do. Nothing we can say or do is going to stop this. This is going to happen. Jesus is going to have to come back and die. Peace be upon him. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day. Now, seven is a number of completion. At the last day, Jesus is going to die. And the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? Now I have more precepts on that morning. This is going to be Zechariah 12 and 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Now, pierced is going into a heartbreak. This is a heartbreak right here. And they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only Son and shall be in bitterness for him. The cry on the day of the Lord is going to be very bitter, as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Okay, so there you have it. I just gave you the firstborn is going to be killed at the last day. This is why God instructed the children of Israel during the killing of the firstborn to eat their bread with no yeast, with no leaven. While the firstborns were being killed, he didn't want them eating anything that rises, okay? And this is why Jesus warned his disciples of the leaven of the Pharisees speaking of Paul with his books about Jesus rising from the dead. So there you have it. Shalom and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth. And all praises are due to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.